Hi everybody, it's me, Mr. Smith, and I'm back again with another art lesson, and this time it's on something very, very important that we all love, and that is painting. Now, if you've been in my class before, you know that I have a trick for painting like a pro, and it has to do with a very good friend of ours, a very old friend of ours, and we're gonna talk about that today, and we're gonna learn some tips and tricks for the right way to paint with a paintbrush like a master. So stick around, and I'll show you all about it right now. All right, guys, so here we are on the table to learn about this painting trick. Now, the good thing about this trick is that you can use it with any kind of brush, no matter if it's large or small or medium or a soft watercolor brush or a stiffer easel brush, round, flat, whatever style of brush, these tricks will work. And the way that I like to introduce this painting idea is by introducing a friend of mine. Let's draw him really quick right now. And there he is, my good old friend, Mr. Paintbrush Man. Now, Mr. Paintbrush Man is a very good friend and he wants to help us make an amazing painting. Now, the problem is, is that he wants to work with us as a team and we need to help him. So let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Paintbrush Man and how you can help him be the best painting tool that he can be. And I happen to have a real Mr. Paintbrush Man right here so we can look at what parts he has and how to use him the right way. So first off, we have his very, very pointy mohawk hairdo. Now his pointy mohawk hairdo has a special name. It's called the bristles, the bristles of the brush. The bristles of the brush are where the paint goes, and that's very important. Just paint goes on the bristles. We never want to grab the bristles on Mr. Paintbrush Man's head, because just like if you were pulling on your friend's hair, that would hurt them really bad. If we pull on Mr. Paintbrush Man's hair, that's gonna hurt his head really bad. We never wanna grab him by the hair. That's not very nice. Now next up is his face. His face here is called the feral, and the feral is his face. Now, just like in real life, if we have a friend, we never want to uh, grab them by the face or poke them in the face. That would really bother our friend. We never really want to grab Mr. Paintbrush Man by his face or his feral either, because if we're holding him by the feral, by his face, then he can't see, he can't breathe, and we're awfully close to getting paint all over our fingers if we're not careful. So we actually want to make sure that we're not grabbing Mr. Paintbrush Man by his face. Now the last part of Mr. Paintbrush Man's body that's important is his long, tall, skinny body. He's a very skinny guy, and this part is called the handle. Now the handle is called the handle because that is where your hand goes. We want to hold Mr. Paintbrush Man by the handle. He can scoot up here toward the ferrule, toward his face, but we always wanna hold Mr. Paintbrush Man by the handle. Just like if you see your friend and you love them an awful lot, you might give them a big hug. When we see Mr. Paintbrush Man, we want to give him a big hug on his tall, skinny body and hold him by the handle. Now, now that we know all of the parts of Mr. Paintbrush Man, we can talk about the right way to use Mr. Paintbrush. We wanna make sure we hold him by the handle. We keep our fingers off of his face and off of his hair. We want to make sure we just hold him back here. And the one thing that we need to help Mr. Paintbrush Man with is we need to help him make sure that he has a good hair day. Now, if you noticed, Mr. Paintbrush Man has a very, very spiky mohawk hairdo. He has a very spiky mohawk hairdo, and he spends all his time getting ready for the day, making sure that his hair looks awesome. Now, if he has a nice spiky hairdo, he will help us make an amazing painting, and he'll help us make all kinds of fine lines and great shapes, but we have to help make sure that happens for him. So let's see what will happen when we use our brush. Okay, so now we are ready to paint. And let's say for example today, we're going to paint with watercolors just because I happen to have some handy. And oh my goodness, there's nothing quite as lovely as a brand new set of watercolors. I'm really excited to dive into this set of watercolors and get busy with it now. Um, so we're gonna need some watercolors. We're gonna need some paper and a little bit of water. I just happen to have a little 
bowl of water here. And the last thing I'm gonna need is my good friend, Mr. Paintbrush Man. Now, I'm going to use the waters to move the water colors onto my paper. That is why they're called water colors. Now, in order to do that, I need to use Mr. Paintbrush Man. And to do that, I need to get his hair nice and wet inside of the water. But notice, I'm holding him by his handle, his long skinny yellow body. I'm not grabbing him by the face or by the hair because if I do, then my fingers are gonna get all wet and that is no good. So I want to make sure I hold him by the handle. I'm gonna get his hair nice and wet. Now, even before I start, if we remember, it's important that he has a good hair day. He has a spiky, nice mohawk hairdo. And when I get him wet, I'm gonna make sure that his hair still stays nice and spiky. And then I'm going to start getting my color. Let's say I wanna paint some red first. I think that'll be nice. Now notice, as I'm getting that color in his bristles, in his hair, I am not messing up his hairdo. I'm not smashing his hair into the paint tray. I'm not crushing it in there. I'm just very gently brushing it on. And look, he still has a nice spiky mohawk hairdo. He's still feeling happy. And now we can paint with him. We can paint lines. We could paint shapes. We could paint whatever we want with him like this. And it will work just fine because he's got that nice spiky mohawk hairdo. In fact, we could even get a new color after we clean out his hair. Oh, look, he's still having a good hair day. And get maybe some green. And if we keep his hair nice and spiky and we keep him having a good hair day, we can even do little teeny tiny dots or little tiny marks from his bristles because he's having a good hair day. Now the problem comes in because sometimes my friends in elementary school are so excited to use Mr. Paintbrush Man and work with Mr. Paintbrush Man that they forget to help him have a good hair day. And when they take Mr. Paintbrush Man, they get him all wet. And sometimes they get so excited that they smash his hair into the colors. Oh no, and they make a mess and they make sure that he gets a little bit messy and they're not taking good care of him or his hairdo. And what happens is they go to paint, but instead of brushing carefully and helping him have a good hair day, they scrub like a mop. Oh no, and if we look, that ends up making kind of a big mess on our paper. And oh my gosh, what has happened to Mr. Paintbrush Man's good hair day? He's having a terrible hair day now. Oh no, and he is not feeling very happy about it either. But don't worry, we can fix it. We can fix it. All we need to do is take him and clean his hair out really well. I'm brushing his bristles on the bottom of the cup, and I need to make sure they're good and wet, and I can just kind of brush him on the side of my cup. And look, now he's got his good hair day once again, and he is feeling so much more happy again. He's feeling so much more happy again. So we need to make sure that Mr. Paintbrush Man stays happy. He keeps a good hair day all the time while we're painting. We never want to smash his hair into our paint tray. We never want to smash his hair onto our paper. He is a paintbrush, not a mop, and we need to treat him like a friend who's here to help. So let's recap. Today we learned about our friend, Mr. Paintbrush Man, in order to learn some tricks for painting better. We learned the three parts of Mr. Paintbrush Man, his bristles, his ferrule, and his handle. And the trick that we learned today to making great painting marks is to always make sure that Mr. Paintbrush Man has a great hair day. We want him to feel good to be working with us and we want to make sure that his hair stays in his head for as long as possible. We never want Mr. Paintbrush Man to have a bad hair day because not only does that make him very upset, but his hair can fall out and then he can't be a paintbrush anymore. So just like when we're working with each other, we want to work together well as a team. When we're working with our friend, Mr. Paintbrush Man, we want to work together as a team and make sure that he has a great day painting just like we will. Well, I hope that helps. I hope that you guys will give painting a try if you can, and I will see you all in the next video.